Today we're talking about the sternomastoid muscles. So this one is really helpful if you're like me and you have difficulty sometimes relating the head to the rest of the figure. And I think this is pretty common. Like if there is any mistake that people make when drawing the figure, it's getting the head too big, too small, too far away from the body, too scrunched down in the body, no neck, that kind of a thing. It can be really difficult to relate the two. And I find looking for the sternomastoid helps so much with the location of the head and the proportion of the head. Just like I repeat with so many other muscles that we are talking about, the sternomastoid helps weave together the feeling of the torso and the head so that they become intertwined and become part of the same unit. We are looking at these muscles. I'm going to outline them on this picture and then I'm going to give us a zoomed in view as well. So this one it's covered up a little bit in this picture but these guys right here Okay, they've got two connection points, so there's a little bit of a V in there, and then this one is wrapping around the other side. We can see the other connection point a little bit there. So there it is. Mostly, though, we want to think about the muscle going diagonally uh, a little bit more so than this way, and I'll get to more details on that in a minute. Here we have a back view. We cannot see where it inserts, but... This is the back of that sternomastoid there. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. Now let's go ahead and get a little bit more of a zoomed in view. We'll get rid of those and we're going to go here. Okay, so now we can see it a little bit more clearly and I want to mention something, right? So we are talking about oh goodness, I'm going to put handwriting on here. I haven't tried that. I don't know how this is going to work. So we are talking about the sternomastoid. Okay, so that's the word that we're saying, but there's actually an elongated version of this. All right, it's the sterno... Oh gosh, how do we spell that? I think it's clevio... I need more room. Sternoclevio-mastoidus, <laughs> or mastoidus. <laughs> Too many syllables for me. But I want to make you aware that this is what it's actually called. We do sternomastoid for short because it's just too long. And that's because this muscle connects the mastoid process, which is this right here, the mastoid process. And we can see it being covered up, but here is where it goes. So it's right behind your ear. If you look and you feel right behind your earlobe, you can feel a bump there. And that is exactly where this muscle is attaching to. All right, so that is the uh, mastoid, mastoidus part of the word there. And then we have sterno and clevio, okay? So the main attachment here is right down here. And in this picture, it kind of looks like it's attaching to the clavicle. So the clavicle is underneath here, right? So in this picture, it looks like it's attaching to the clavicle. And a lot of times when we look at a person, it looks also like it's attaching to the clavicle, but it's really not. It's really just going past the clavicle and attaching onto the sternum, which is that breastplate, and it's that um, uh, area in the ribs right in the middle that is flat. So it's actually attaching here to the top of that, and then at this other secondary point, it is attaching on to the clavicle, okay? So that's where we get sterno for sternum, clevio for clavicle, and mastoid for this bit here, okay? So it's got those two attachments, but this one that goes down onto the sternum is really the most important one. So primarily, when you think about this symbolically, I want you to think of a long muscle with a round belly in the middle 
that goes from behind the ear up here to the sternum, okay? And it has a narrow attachment point at the sternum. This part off to the side is secondary. Right about here is where that main portion is going to attach. So it goes right by the clavicle. It does not attach to the clavicle there. It's attaching onto the top of the sternum. And then it's right about in here that that other portion is going to attach. And then we don't have, of course, a skull on here, but we can estimate that those mastoid processes would be around there. So we would have a muscle, something like this on this diagram. And there we go. And just want to point out again where these attach. So there it is, the sternocleidoid mastoideus right here. And so it looks like I probably did spell that wrong, but I'm an artist. What do you want, right? <laughs> so here is that attachment point on the sternum. And this is facing the opposite way. So keep in mind that the sternum would be right here. This is the outside of the body laterally. Okay, this is the inside of the body. And there's our sternomastoid attaching here. All right, so it's just a little bit away from that middle part. Actually, I'm going to show you a little bit of this muscle on myself. I don't usually model uh, for these situations, but let's go ahead and do that. And then we'll look at some of the photos so that we can outline. Okay, so here I am again, I don't usually model, not usually my thing, but I find it really helpful to be able to show and kind of like move what's happening, right? So um, the reason that I find this muscle so helpful, like I said, is because you can find a relationship between the clavicles and the body and the back of the ear. Now that point behind the ear in many um, poses or in many positions, that's going to be the widest part of the neck. And then you can kind of relate the head to that, right? So we're going from the sternum to the back of the neck. So we've, we've got these angles. Now these angles can help you understand the proportion of the neck. So if somebody's angles are wider, they've got a wider neck and a wider head. And if they're more narrow, then they've got, you know, a more narrow neck and a more narrow head. And um, you can also use like that shape, that negative space in between that triangle that is in between, um, you know, these pencils that I'm holding up and my chin in order to understand like how far away the head should be. Now, when I start turning, right? Hold on, let me get these in place. It's so weird to like see myself here and then try and do this. <laughs> Bear with me, please. I do ridiculous things for art instruction. Okay, so then as the head turns in a different direction, right? So now uh, this one is more up and down and this one is angled more. And if I go even further, this one I can't see, but it probably should be totally uh, vertical at this point. And this one is angled, okay? So just by having, ugh, they're caught on my earring. So just by having these lines looking, you know, in different directions, like this would be somebody looking that way. And this would be somebody looking this way. And then actually, if these get wide, that is somebody looking up because it pulls this part behind the ears down and then you have a wider V there at the sternomastoid. Okay, enough of this kind of awkward looking at me. Let's take a look at some pictures and find the sternomastoid. Great, so I included this picture because you can see the beginning of that sternomastoid right there attaching to the sternum. Here's the head of one clavicle and then the head of another. So you can see it's attaching onto the sternum and not the clavicle. 
the sternomastoid going this way is a little more relaxed because this is the one that's really working. The one that's going right there from the sternum and heading up behind the ear to that mastoid process. And remember, it makes sense because this muscle here is contracting and pulling the ear toward the middle of the body. So it's helping the head to turn and to tilt forward in this position. You can also see just a hint of that secondary connection over there. But again, this is the dominant one. So the muscle fibers go this way and then with a little bit off to the side there. Now this one, she's a little um, blocked, but it's a nice leaning back and turning image. So I definitely wanted to include it. There's our sternomastoid heading toward behind her ear. We just can't see all the way there. I'm gonna try and make that line a little straighter. Whoop, that's kind of better. And then here's that secondary insertion over here, our little triangle. And so there is our sternomastoid working to keep the head turning this way, plus working to keep her head from falling all the way back. So that tension is pulling her head forward and helping to stabilize it. We can also see the other one here. Seems to be pulling a little bit, again, to help keep her head up, but we're not having the head rotating this way, so it's not quite as engaged as that one. Now here's a good side view, so we can see all the way back to the ear this time. Here's the end of the sternomastoid on the other side, and then it's like her neck overall is like a cylinder here. So actually, let me get a new color for that, right? So we'll do turquoise. So here is the cylinder of her neck, kind of like in here. We're sort of looking up at it and it angles down in the front, right? So it's higher up in the back, lower in the front. So this is sort of the cylinder that I'm envisioning here. And then maybe this goes up there and, okay. And then here are the muscles. Let's get the red again for the muscles. Make it a little, a little lighter. All right, so there's the attachment of the opposite sternomastoid. Here's this one going right around underneath her ear or behind her ear. Secondary insertion point there onto the clavicle. And so there's the sternomastoid wrapping around the tube of the neck, just like this. Let's also, while we're at it, I'm gonna take white and kind of outline these clavicles a bit too. So there's the head of one clavicle, goes back that direction, it's kind of truncated. And here's the other going up to form with the scapula that, you know, top plane for the shoulder girdle in there. Here's one where she's actually leaning forward this time um, instead of backwards. So most of the pictures I have, people are either upright with their head turned, um, but here she's actually leaning down. So we can see this portion here because her head is being turned around that way. So here the sternomastoid is working to bring the back of her skull closer to the front line of her body, right? There's that secondary insertion point. There's our sternomastoid on this side. And this other one over here is more relaxed, but there's the positioning of it, okay? So now that shape that I was talking about is like this kind of a V, right? So that's something just when you're doing a figure drawing, you can you can really kind of quickly and easily like mark down lines for that really symbolically in order to get the positioning of the head. Here's the mastoid process. So I'm gonna put, I'm just gonna put a little line across here to show where that's gonna attach. 
We're also going to have the attachment over here on the mastoid process. And look, here's the other mastoid process now that I'm looking at this one. Okay, so the other one's going to attach there, and I'm guessing maybe this could be it. Just a little, little difficult to tell, so I'm going to put it there and just try and get a little bit of the, the back of that sternomastoid. So here's one insertion point. I'm going to just put a little mark here and here, and then right about over here on the clavicle for the second insertion point. I can't see the sternum from here. Um, I also can't really see that clavicle, but I'm going to estimate somewhere in here just looking at this angle. Got the back of the sternomastoid coming this way and going down toward that sternum. And I'm going to put in the little secondary attachment part there also, leaving that little V open and the inside. I'm going to give it a little bit of a belly here. Let's give it a little roundness. This is an anatomical drawing after all. And I'll do the same thing here knowing that I, I don't exactly see where we're heading that way. So I'm just going to kind of make it up, give it a little belly as it's going kind of under his jaw. A little belly there and then you know it's it's wrapping around back there somewhere and the little extension there do some of the same thing here we're going just this direction I can't see the two um, separate insertion points here so I'm just gonna basically draw a band that way and actually nothing on that side because eventually we're gonna have some of the back musculature there so I'll just leave that from here I'm just gonna show that kind of top portion so I'm just gonna end up with like just a couple little tiny triangles there really hardly anything again because I'm gonna get some back muscles on there so I'll just give it a little bit of muscle fibers and a little bit of shading All right, let's do some sketching. This video features highlights from a full drawing lesson, which can be found on patreon.com slash school of real estate. There you will find extended lessons, multiple examples, reference photos, and other tutorials. Check out patreon.com slash school of real estate.